Hi, my name is Matthew Boyd, and as you probably already figured out, I'm doing my podcast on the religion of the ancient Romans and how important it was in their society. In this podcast, I will be covering first why ancient societies have religion and why it was an essential part of the Roman society to give you some prior knowledge on the subject. Then I'll go on to explain what Roman religion was in a sense, what it affected, and examples where religion affected the whole empire. Then I'll discuss how important it was in their society. Okay, so firstly, what is religion and what does it encompass? Well, you probably already have your own idea of what religion is. However, to set down a definitive definition of religion is extremely difficult, as the word religion can cover many things and can be defined in different ways, depending on how you look at it. In terms of my podcast, though, and my topic, I'm not arguing what religion is. So let's give it some structure and say religion can be some form of beliefs regarding the cause, nature and purpose of the universe, a faith or belief in something to help with the problems of life, a belief system or a cultural system. What religion encompassed in Roman society is really anything to do with that definition. So their gods, you know, their practices, their prayers, the way they saw the world, their beliefs, you know, you name it. To first understand the importance of religion in an ancient society, one has to have somewhat of an understanding of why people have religion and where it originated from. At least 30,000 years ago, religion existed in some way and forms in several Paleolithic societies. Numerous cave paintings and burial sites can prove this. As humans behaviorally and technologically evolved, they began to question. They questioned things like their existence, the purpose of things. You know, why did that happen? Why did they die? Where did they come from? How should I live? Why did that happen? Why are there good times and bad times? You know, it's just a part of what humans do naturally. It is possible that from this curiosity stems religion. Religion provided the mind with a coping mechanism which explains these unanswerable questions. Now, with that in mind, let's discuss why was it important to have religion back in those ancient times. Well, in ancient Rome, people had no explanation for everyday phenomenon like weather events, you know, eclipses, their existence where they had come from, why they were there, as they weren't technologically or scientifically advanced. Without an explanation, the human mind just continues to question these things and has a fear of the unknown. For example, let's say you were a farmer living back then, and out of the blue, a thunderstorm hits and destroys your crop. You would have no explanation for that thunderstorm at all, where it had come from, and why it had destroyed your crop. But, If we bring religion into this situation, it offers you an explanation for it and something to blame. The Romans' numerous number of gods allowed individuals to explain everyday phenomenon. They they believed that it was the gods' divine powers that caused these events to happen, and that if the correct prayers, sacrifices, and rituals were undertaken and completed, the gods would bring the people good fortune. Comparing this to modern society, where scientific and technological advances have allowed us to answer many of these questions, it is hard to fully grasp what it, it would what it would have been like. So now that you have some background information on why it is important that ancient societies had religion and why they had it, let us continue on onto the topic of what Roman religion actually was. Initially, the people under Roman rule were mostly pagans, but as the empire expanded tremendously. They absorbed many societies and civilizations which didn't have the same religious beliefs as the Romans. It is important to grasp this fact as there was no single religion constant throughout the empire. However, actual Roman people were almost all pagans with a religion that was relatively the same. They worshipped over a hundred different gods and goddesses many of which were added to Roman religion during its expansion into an empire. Even though there were hundreds of Roman deities, there were a collection of 12 major gods that were called the Diaconsentes. These were Juno, Vesta, Minerva, Ceres, Diana, Venus, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Neptune, Vulcan, and Apollo. As the Romans came into contact with the Greeks, each one of these gods began to be associated with a Greek god or goddess. For example, Jupiter's parallel was Zeus, Juno's Hera, Minerva's Athena, and so on. Each one of these gods was not all-powerful or or seeing, but had a specific purpose which it fulfilled. Mars, for example, was the god of war, 
you know, Neptune, the god of water and the sea, and Diana, the goddess of hunting, the moon, and birth. To keep on good terms with the gods and not endure their divine wrath, an individual did not have to display good behaviours or morals during their life, but instead complete or take part in prayers, rituals, and sacrifices. Worship of the gods was divided into two forms. There was the private religious practices, which were done by individuals and families in their own homes, in which the gods were ingrained into their own life. These gods were the lesser gods and the household deity, the La Familiarius, and these protected the household and its members. Public worship, on the other hand, was organised by the state and worshipped the Diaconsentes, the twelve major gods, and were done much more formally and completed by priests and priestesses. There were around five religious posts in Roman religion and society. There were the public priests, who were elected for life and were very well respected in the community. There were the Vestal Virgins, virgin women, who were dedicated to the god Vesta. Augurs, the priests and officials of Roman religion, and Horsperex, the readers of sacrificed animals and trails. Well, with all that in mind, how and what did religion affect in Roman society? Really, religion affected everyone in Roman society in some way, while also having major effects on cities and the entire empire. Firstly, on an individual level, religion played a large part as it affected their way of life, belief and views. Every day, people would engage in some sort of religious practice and confer to others about it. Their beliefs, the way they thought and their reasoning were affected by it as it allowed them to comprehend things which would otherwise be impossible to understand. Religion also affected individuals as it allowed them and aided their minds to cope with the fear of death and the unknown. On a large scale, the effect it had on the government and social structures were major. People who held respectable religious posts were very influential and powerful, and it was possible for individuals to use religion to their own gains to justify positions of power. For example, Caesar, after becoming dictator, deified himself and proclaimed that he was a son of God and a descendant of Venus. Another important example was a setup of the imperial cult by Augustus that stemmed from the effect and power of religion, causing a change to the entire Roman Empire and political system. Now that you have an idea of Roman religion, what it affected, and how it affected society, I'm going to compare the importance of religion with the importance of the economy, government, and the military's role in Roman society. Like religion, each of these elements had a major role in society. Firstly, the economy affects pretty much the entire society. Without it, Rome would never be, have been able to prosper or turn into an empire, as it's an integral part of society and needed for expansion. Also, realistically, without a good economy, Rome wouldn't have existed. Next, the importance and need of a government plays a key role in the development of a society. A small civilization can exist without one, however, for a large city like Rome to develop, some form of government must exist. Without one, it is again impossible to expand or do anything collectively as a society. The military, ha or some form of an army, is something that a civilization can exist without. However, in an ancient society like that of the Romans, where a city is bordered by numerous other city-states and civilizations, it is something that is a necessity if they ever want to expand or have control over their own city. Rome without it would have never become an empire and would most likely be absorbed into a different civilization. Lastly is religion. An ancient society like Rome could theoretically exist without it. However, no other major civilizations has ever not had some form of religion. So as this is the case, it is something that an ancient society needs. As previously mentioned, the effects it has are large on both an individual scale and that of the civilizations. So in comparing the importance of religion against the roles of the military, government and economy, it is clear that religion was a, a very important element of Roman society. To conclude my discussion, it is clear that religion was an incredibly important part of Roman society. As they were an ancient people without advanced levels of technology and sophisticated sciences, there was a need for the people to believe in something. Religion helped the Romans define themselves and affected everyone in a society from the government to the day-to-day -day living of the people. It shaped their history, playing a part in every individual's lives and affected the entire empire. 
From this, it is obvious that religion played an incredibly important part in Roman society. Thank you for listening to my podcast.